Hiya, babe. Say, how about a little kiss? Ouch. Does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. You all remember Metro Goldwyn Mayer's famous Maisie picture. In just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Anne Southern. But first, your announcer. Southern as Maisie. Yep, I'm Maisie, like the man said, Maisie Revere. My real name is Mary Anastasia O'Connor, after my mother's favorite sister. But I changed it to Maisie Revere when I was bitten by the show business bug. Hmm. If I'd known what I was getting into then, I would have bitten back. For about a year now, I've been hoping to have my name changed again to something real permanent, like Mrs. Eddie Jordan. But my boyfriend, Eddie, can't afford to get married on the salary he's making. So you can understand why we don't go out much and why I get so excited, like today, for instance, when Eddie and me are going to a fancy costume ball for charity. And Eddie and me are going in class, too. We're taking a taxi to the subway. Right now, I'm at the costumers trying on costumes and... Ouch! Mr. Clark, have mercy. Uh, sorry, Miss Revere. Did I get another pin in you? Yeah, so take it easy, will you? I'm going to the ball masquerading as a belle of the gay 90s, not as a game of darts. I just asked for a few simple alterations. Uh, Miss Revere, what you've asked me to do to this gay 90s dress is not a simple alteration. It's a major surgery. Yeah, and I've been taking it without any anesthetic. Ouch! Uh, but stand still, Miss. <laughs> you wanted the bustle changed for something else. And you're going to guess it. Ooh. Yeah, but if you decide when I'm through with the alterations that you don't want this costume, you know what? What? I'll just hate you. Well, don't worry, Mr. Clark. This is really the one I want. Honest. Yeah, honest and truly. Mm -hmm. And no changing your mind again? No matter what? Uh-huh. Raise your right hand and swear. Gladly. Here goes. <laughs> no, 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 you clumsy. You, you ripped the sleeve and ruined the dress. Oh, well, Miss Revere, and what have you got to say for yourself? Well, I think I'll take that Queen Isabella costume after all. Oh, no, no, no. I... Well, just for that, I'm going back home and make my own yes, costume. Thank you. Mr. Clark, you have just lost the customer. But thank you, Miss Revere. It's losing customers like you that brings a little sunshine into my life. Now go, please, and make your own costume. Well, don't think that I can't. Goodbye. <laughs> She's gone. Oh, she's gone, gone. Oh. Can I borrow your scissors? No, no, and get out. Out, out! Oh, all right, selfish. I won't do it, Maisie. I absolutely won't do it, and that's final. Oh, gosh, Eddie, you gotta. The ball is tonight, and there ain't no time to sew something up for you. Besides, I used all the material I could find around here to make my Madame Dewberry gown. Hmm. Madame Dewberry, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> Sounds very, uh... Well, that it is, Eddie. You should see it. It has a bare midriff. And in front... Maisie, don't look now, but in Madame Dewberry's day, they didn't wear gowns with a bare midriff. I know, but I couldn't help it, Eddie. The shower curtain I made it out of had a big hole in it. And wait till you see the wig I fixed up. Just like Dewberry wore. The loveliest shade of pink. Pink? Dewberry's wig was white. I know. But they don't make cotton candy in that color. Cotton candy. Mm. Well, at least your costume shows ingenuity. Well, so does the one I thought of for you, Eddie. And imagination, too. I ain't gonna do it. Eddie Jordan, you don't love me. I do, honey, but I love myself a little, too, and I absolutely refuse to crawl around on my hands and knees with a wash tub over my back just because you happen to think I should go as a turtle. 
But uh, you might win the prize for the most novel costume. Look, darling, I, I don't want to start an argument. Neither do I. Good. So you just go as a turtle and there won't be any. Oh, the only way for a man to win an argument with a woman is with his hat. With his hat? Yes, just grab it and run. All right, Eddie. Go like anything you want. Only you'll be losing out on a chance to get that first prize, which is $500. Five, huh? Say, that's a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And if a certain party had that much money, a certain party could ask a certain party a certain question, the answer to which would be certainly the certain party would marry the other certain party. Uh. Hello, Maisie. Hello, Eddie. Hello, Hello. Mert. Hi. I'd like to ask you a question, Merton. Huh. What would you do if you were me? Well, if Don't I... try to think first, Merton. Answer without thinking like I always do. I mean, if you could get $500... Would you be a turtle? Well, I don't know. If I was a turtle, what would I do with $500? You see? Well, I don't mean that kind of turtle. I mean people turtle. Huh? She means I should be one. Oh. With a wash tub on my back. A turtle with a wash tub on your back? Yes. Eddie, have you been smoking pablum again? Oh, it's just a costume, Mert, for the ball tonight. Oh, that. All I can say is if I have to crawl around on my hands and knees all night, I'm not going. Nobody's going. I sat up all night trying to figure out something clever for Eddie and... Well, what do you mean, nobody's going? Well, Mr. Devlin called the ball off. Ah, uh, there's good news tonight. But Mr. Devlin can't do that. Tickets have been sold and it's for charity for the hospital. I know, but it's Devlin's mansion where the ball was supposed to be held and he just decided he ain't going to go through with it. And that's what I came in to tell you. Oh, but he can't do that. He promised. We've got an architect working on the plans for that hospital. Gee, I can't understand what made him change his mind. Well, who knows? Maybe this morning he got up on the wrong side of his bank book. Uh, uh, uh. Well, I'm going down to see him and find out for myself. I'm from Vermont, you know. Maisie, that saying is from Missouri. Not when you talk to Mr. Devlin. He's a Republican. <laughs> back out now, Mr. Devlin. Over 400 tickets have been sold and the orchestra's been hired. Well, I'm sorry, Miss Revere, and I'll try to explain my reasons for withdrawing the use of my home. Well, okay, I'll try to understand, but it ain't going to be easy. My biggest customer is J.J. Randolph of Memphis. Now, he buys billions of safety pins from me every year. Hmm. J.J. must have a lot of babies. <laughs> no, no, just one daughter, Prunella. She's arriving today to spend a few days at my house before going out west. Naturally, as the daughter of my biggest customer, I have to entertain her. Oh, well, then the costume ball tonight would start her off with a bang. Oh, and there's a costume I saw this morning that's real snazzy. The one that Salome danced in. Well, somehow I don't think Prunella would care for dancing tonight. Oh, uh, well, then we could get her a costume like Whistler's mother and she can sit around in a rocking chair all night. You don't seem to get the point of why I'm calling off the ball tonight. Prunella is a girl. So what? That could happen to any baby. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, being a girl, she'd feel sort of left out of things. You know, a big ball and she without a partner? A male partner? Oh, well, may maybe we can get her a boyfriend. W what kind of a looking girl is she? Well, um, I haven't seen her lately, but uh, you've seen pictures of plastic surgery on the face labeled before and after? Yes. A Prunella looks like during. Um, now, of course, if we could get a volunteer to make the supreme sacrifice and be Prunella's escort tonight... Uh... You let us use your house for the ball as scheduled? Yes. Yes, I would. Oh. Uh, have you any particular man in mind, Miss Revere? Yeah. But tonight he better not be too particular. It's my boyfriend, Eddie Jordan. But I think he loves me enough to go out with another girl. You're a fine girl, Miss Revere. Remember, you're doing this for a hospital. Yeah. And after Eddie sees the date I got for him... I will probably be the first patient. The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment.
Maisie. Yeah, Eddie. Well, I'm still waiting. Aren't you going to tell me what you said to Mr. Devlin that made him change his mind about using his home for the costume ball tonight? Well, Eddie, it's a long story. You see, um, I'm a woman and he's a man. Yes. Well, does that answer your question? Yes, it answers it. But ball or no ball, I'm not showing up there as a turtle and that's final. Well, anything you wish, Eddie. After all, I don't want... You're giving in without an argument? Well, sure, Eddie. After all, in things like this, the man is the boss. And the woman, she's nothing to Well, now you're talking. Of course, that ain't really much of a job, boss over nothing. <laughs> well, tonight's your night, Eddie. You can go to the ball as anything you wish, even as the world's most eligible bachelor. Say, being Don Juan sort of appeals to me. I'll tell you what, honey. I'll go grab me a costume and pick you up here about eight tonight. Uh, well, um, I'm not going tonight, Eddie. Maisie, you're not sick. No, but somebody else is. He's, um, he's my cousin. Well, Maisie, isn't this rather sudden? Oh, not at all. He's been my cousin for years. Well, you never told me you had a cousin? Well, sure, everybody's got a cousin if they think about it. This one is related to me by marriage. By marriage? Yeah. You, you see, they were married. Who? His father and mother. Well, I expected that. You did? <laughs> Everybody else in the family was surprised. Eddie, um, you ain't gonna find it easy to believe what suddenly happened. No, but I'll force myself. Well, that's real sweet of you, honey. You see, I've got to sit up with my cousin because he, um, well, he just caught the measles again. Oh. Well, darling, I can't let you expose yourself to this dread disease alone. I'm going to be right with you, to the end. Oh, no, Eddie, you can't. You mustn't. You might catch me. I mean, it. No, this is my problem, Eddie. I alone must brave being exposed to the horrible danger. But, me. And I want you to carry on like nothing had happened. Go to the ball, dance, sing, enjoy your... Uh Uh-huh. Maisie, I very seldom dance with myself. I guess I'm just not the type. Oh, well, you don't have to go alone, Eddie. I've arranged a date for you. Well, well, you have changed, honey. Uh You always told me you wouldn't trust me out with another girl. Oh, but I'm not afraid of this one. I mean, um, I'm sure you'll like Prunella. Prunella? Uh Uh-huh, with the accent on the prune. That's um, the way she pronounces it, I mean. Oh, and what sort of looking girl is dear Prunella? Well, uh, she resembles a picture star. Which one? Lassie. What? I said, mm, that's... See how I can describe her. She's sort of, um, well, um, different. Oh, is she pretty? Mm, she's very intelligent. Is she pretty? And a wonderful dancer. Is she pretty? And she dresses very smart. What about the face? Oh, you don't have to worry about that. She has one. Oh, I'm glad. For a minute you had me worried. I thought maybe she looked like a human anteater. Oh, then you've seen her. No, and I don't intend to. I'll take the measles. No, Eddie, you've got to be Prunella's date tonight. you just got to. But, Maisie, I can't even look at a girl like this Prunella must be. You know I've got a weak stomach. Yeah, but a kind heart. And it's for a worthy cause, Eddie. Won't you, huh? Won't you? Oh, gee, gosh, Maisie. And I'll be able to break away from my, um... um cousin. Yeah, thanks, my cousin. I'll get away about 11 tonight, and I'll meet you in Mr. Devlin's garden, and, um... And what, Miss? Well, we'll talk. But there might be somebody watching, honey. Well, in that case, we'll have to talk. Okay, Maisie. Okay. Prunella's got herself a date. Oh, good evening, miss. I'd like to see Mr. Devlin, please. I've got good news for him. Oh, he always upstairs putting on his costume for the ball tonight. Can I help y'all? Well, yes, I'll. Say, what kind of makeup do you use, honey? You look positively yummy. I don't wear any messy old makeup, sugar. Everything you see about me is just plain little old me. All these southern guys are just natural. See, I come from the tobacco country. Well, I could have guessed that. You're so round, so firm, so fully stacked. 
Well, here I am, Miss Revere. Everything's set, I hope. Yeah. Eddie Jordan can be expected here any minute. I hope Prunella will try to look, well, presentable at least. Ah, mm-hmm. so well, honey. Because Eddie didn't want to... Uh, your Prunella? Uh, time has been quite kind to her, eh, Maisie? A little too kind. Don't you all worry about Eddie boy having himself a bold, honey. After all, keeping men interested is my business. Yeah, and you sure got an attractive sample case. I sure appreciate your putting yourself out for me, honey. Yeah, but I'm afraid I may be out permanently. I mean, Prunella, Eddie may not be your type. You see, he's a man. That's my type. Uh, Well, if you'll excuse me for a moment, I must tell the servants that the ball is on for tonight. I expect you to save a dance for me tonight, Prunella. Don't count on it too much, sugar. I may be too busy with Eddie, boy. I hope. I'll get it. Well, good evening, y'all. Yeah, good all to y'all, y'all. I understand a certain Maisie Revere was coming over here, and I'd like... Why, thank you, Mm. sugar. Well, here I am. Let's go, Mr. Um, Glockenfeld. Glockenfeld? Maisie, are you out of your mind? I was, but I ain't now. Come on, Mr. Gluckenfeld. Goodbye, Abigail. Abigail? Oh, sugar, you made a mistake. Just almost, honey. Just almost. Come, chum. Well, it's all set for the ball, and... Oh, you must be Eddie. Uh, Yes. I see you're here early to see Primella. Well, the cat's out of the bag, and I'm holding it. Come on, Ed. Not so fast. This gorgeous creature is Prunella? This handsome man is Eddie? Yeah, I'm Eddie. Oh, Prunella. I'm leaving. Are you coming, Eddie? Do you think I'm crazy? No, but I can dream, can't I? I'll be delighted to be Prunella's companion, her very close companion tonight, for charity, of course. (laughs) Bye, Maisie. Give my regards to your cousin with the measles. Your cousin has the measles. Oh, I'm so sorry, honey. Is there anything I can do to help you tonight? Yeah, you can catch it. Well, Eddie, I'm going. So long. Likewise, I'm sure. Well, I better get into my costume for the bowl. I'm going as a member of Queen Elizabeth's court. Uh, yes, Prunella's going to be a lady in waiting. So don't you be late, Eddie, honey. I won't. You're just what the lady's been waiting for. <laughs> See y'all shortly, sugar. <laughs> Merton. Are Eddie and Prunella still in there dancing as close together as before? Oh, well, wait, 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 Maisie. Wait till I get up a little higher in the tree so as I can see better. Oh, my God. Oh, oh. If he gets any closer, he'd be behind her. Oh, fine. What's he, what's he doing now, Mert? Well, well he, he's saying to her, Prunella, when you're so close to me, my heart beats louder than a dollar watch. How do you know that from way out here? You can't read lips. No, but I can read eyes. Uh, 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 yourself. Eddie's look as big as balloons right now. Mert, I just got to find out what Eddie's saying to that sneaky Dixie cup. Oh. I'm going in. Well, well, well you better be careful, Maisie. You'll rip your costume. So what? The only reason I made myself for a Madame Dewberry was because I thought I might sneak in a dance with Eddie when that prunella got tired of him. Oh, she ain't tired. Wonderful legs that gal has. Oh. Wonderful. Now, look, Mert. Huh? I've got an idea. I want you to cut in on Prunella and dance with her. Me? Dance with her? Well, will you do it for me, Mert? Oh, but I'll do it for me. <laughs> that gal's got everything. Yeah, include Nettie. You just dance Prunella over to where I'm standing, Mert, and leave the rest to me. Uh-huh. I'll get down from the tree, Mert. What? 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 Ma- oh! Ah! Maisie, did you hurt yourself? Where did you fall? I ain't saying, but I should have taken that costume with a bustle. <laughs> Oh, frankly, I was a little shocked the way y'all tore me out of Mr. Jordan's arms, sir. Um, Are you northerners always that impetuous? Oh, I ain't a Yankee sugar doll. I'm just a youth from the suit. I come from Miami, Florida. Shut up! You have a New York accent. Uh, Well, I was born during the tourist season. Sir, don't be uncouth. Yes, huh? sir. When you're with a lady, you gotta be cool. Oh, sir, you're that Revere gal, ain't you? Mm-hmm. I can tell even we 
with your mask and your prunella. <laughs> Having quite a lark with Eddie, ain't you, honey? Oh, yeah, he's so high on someone, so interesting. He was telling me a little while back how he used to play football. Yeah, we kind of suspected that by the passes he was making. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, honey. <laughs> I'm afraid my whole glass of punch splashed all over you. Yeah, uh, ma'am, how could you be so clumsy? Practice, Sonny, practice. Oh, look at my costume. Now my whole evening is ruined. That's nice. I mean, I'm sorry, honey. Look, why, why don't you you slip into my costume and I'll wear yours? Well, I really shouldn't. After all, it was an accident. But there's Eddie, of course. Yeah, another accident. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, babe. You two can change in the powder room, huh? Okay. Well, in case you get changed before me, Miss Revere, you'll dance with Eddie, won't you? Mm -hmm. I mean, you wouldn't mind taking my place with him for a while, would you? Keep him from being lonesome. Would she? Uh, 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 uh. It'll be a pleasure, kiddo. A real pleasure. <laughs> Well, so I finally found you out here in the garden, huh? I've been looking all over for you, honey. Yeah, well, sugar mammy, honey. Did y'all miss your little Prunella? Prunella? Uh-huh. Oh. Oh, uh, yeah, you, uh, look a little shorter than you did a while ago. Well, naturally, honey. Those burning kisses of yours wore me down. Kisses? Didn't y'all kiss her? I mean, me? Oh, yes, but, uh... Those were only rough samples. <laughs> well, I'd sure like another sample, sir. Like before. Here goes, honey. Mm, well? Heaven. Plain heaven. Ouch! Say, if you liked it so much, what's the idea of slapping me? That's because of what you Yankees did during the Civil War. <laughs> Maisie, I found you at last. I've been looking all over the place for you for three hours. Everybody I talked to said... I know. Told you the rumor that I'd left town with a broken heart. Yes. Say, you know about that rumor? I should. I started it. Eddie, I've been crying my eyes out. Oh, you shouldn't, honey. They're such nice eyes. Gee, you really think so? Eddie, you got nice eyes, too. Yeah? Thanks. Of course, it's too bad you can't keep them focused on one woman at a time. But I do see very well with these eyes of mine. For example, if my eyes weren't so good, I might have thought that you were really Prunella, uh. wearing her costume and her drawl. Oh, Eddie, then you know. It was me you kissed, not her. Oh, Eddie, how can I be so stupid? I don't know. But don't change. You mean go on being stupid? No, beautiful. Just beautiful. Oh, gosh, Eddie, it's midnight. They're going to announce the winner of the $500 prize. Yes. And say, that lady in waiting costume you're wearing stands a swell chance. It's very, uh, well, you know, expensive looking. Well, it should. It belongs to Penilla. <laughs> say, oh. What's so funny? I was just thinking, wouldn't it be a ride if I won the prize with her costume and we could get married on her money? <laughs> <laughs> yes. 500 bucks. Come on, let's go in. All right. And now, ladies and gentlemen, and the judges have decided on the winner of the prize for the most imaginative costume. And here it is, folks. Miss Prunella Randolph's costume won first prize. Eddie, did you hear that? Oh, wow. The judges have decided that Miss Randolph showed great imagination. When, with a mere shower curtain and some cotton candy, she made herself an authentic Madame du Barry costume. Oh. Maisie, don't look now, but you outsmarted yourself out of our wedding money. Yeah, but I've still got the groom, I think. <laughs> In just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie.
once again, here's Maisie. Well, I guess that little episode proves that people never change. People like me, I mean. When I was a baby, I used to amuse myself by putting my itty-bitty foot in my mouth. And I've never stopped. When I get into a spot now, every time I open my mouth, I still put my foot in it. I know in the case of Maisie versus Prunella, I acted jealous, inconsiderate, distrusting, and suspicious. Which just proves that I'm a normal woman. Well, after what I've learned tonight, I've just made a resolution never to be jealous again and... Uh-oh. There's Eddie dancing with a little red-headed job. Hmm. As I was saying, I've just made a resolution never to be jealous again. Starting tomorrow. Oh, Eddie. Eddie. Time to go home. Right now. <laughs> You have just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. <laughs> Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Sidney Miller, Pat McGeehan, Howard McNear, Lorene Tuttle, and Frank Nelson. Jack McCoy speaking. <laughs>